Hi, I'm Merlin and welcome to the Faith and Art video. Today, we'll be talking about the Shingon Buddhism, specifically the Wisdom King of Passion, is a male and the totem pole of the Shem Xian Wolf Clan. When we talk about Japan, what are the first thoughts that comes to your mind? Perhaps it's their elaborate woodblock prints. Or maybe it is their delicious sushi. Or maybe it is an episode of an anime you just watch. When it comes to religion in Japan, the mass majority of the people follows a folk religion known as Shintoism, while the other majority practices Buddhism. Prior to the introduction of Buddhism, native Japanese practices Shintoism that focuses on nature worship, fertility cults, and ancestor veneration. Buddhism was introduced to Japan from China and Korea, and over time, new types of Buddhism emerges. According to the heritage of Japanese art, during the Heian period, people were no longer satisfied with merely the outward panoply of the religion and splendor of the temple but began to search for something more spiritual. The new direction of Japanese Buddhism was ultimately determined when the Japanese priests Shai Ko and Kukai visited Tang China to study Buddhism and brought back to Japan the two new sects of Tendai and Shingon Buddhism. Shingon Buddhism features many types of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and even new deities as well, one of them being a tier of deities known as the Wisdom King which is just a tier below the Bodhisattvas. They are viewed as protectors and guardians of Buddhism, and are a wrathful manifestation of Buddha, with each representing a certain aspect of humanity. Now we'll be zooming in and taking an in-depth look at one of the Wisdom King sculpture from the Boston Museum of Fine Art, the Aizen Meo, the Wisdom King of Passion. Aizen Meo's skin color is described as the color of his body is like the ray of the sun, and most commentaries agree that his skin is red. The color red is a religious symbol that expresses emotion and excitement, with the color of blood rushing into the vein to give the face a hue of joy and excitement. Just like the Buddha, Aizen Meo is depicted with three eyes as well. In Buddhism, the third eye represents looking beyond reality and having a spiritual awakening. And like the other wisdom king, he's depicted with a fearsome look, his hair raising up, along with a set of raised eyebrows complemented by an open mouth with fang-like teeth. He also wears a lion crown as a symbol of being king-like, with practitioners of Shingon Buddhism striving to be like him. It also symbolizes the obstacle one has to pass through before attaining Nevada. On his top right hand, you can see him carrying a red lotus bow, a Buddhist symbol which represents purity, compassion, love, and the heart. Another icon of Hindu origin can be found on his middle right hand, which is a type of club known as the Virja, a Sanskrit word meaning thunderbolt and diamond, and is used to quell all calamities. On his opposite hand, Asian male wields the bell of wisdom said to awaken the living being from their sleep-like ignorance and to stimulate the mind of enlightenment. The lower left hand holds a bow, which curiously seems to be adopted from the Kama Deva, the Hindu god of love, which in turn seems to be based on the Greek and Roman god, the Cupid. It could also represent the swiftness of Isaac Mayo's action in targeting subjects from afar. His opposite hand would have once held an arrow similar to other depictions of this deity. To sum up, Aizen Meo is a tier of deity known as the Wisdom King, and his deal with passion and lust, with iconography influenced by Hinduism and his worship and utilized similarly to Shintoism. Next up, we will talk about the native North America and their totem pole. So, what do you think? Of when I say North American or Native American. Perhaps you'll think of the Disney movie Brother Bear, or maybe a video game you have played before. Trying to understand and define Native American and its art can be tricky and complicated. 
as it consists of many large group of people with a multitude of language, life ways, and convention for understanding the world. We can make it easier to understand them by separating them geographically and temporally. In terms of geography, they include many tribes from different places ranging from the Atlantic woodlands, southwest, the Great Plains, far west, northwest coast, and even the Arctic and sub-Arctic. For today, we'll zoom in onto the Northwest Coast and the Shamshian Wolf Clan totem poles. In terms of history, the first European who set foot on the shores of Pacific Northwest Coast was explorer Captain James Cook in 1778, who gave the Europeans the first glimpse of the calf wooden pole. Now that we got the brief history out of the way, we can look at what a totem pole is. According to the Encyclopedia of Native Art, this generic term is used to identify a variety of vertical cylindrical poles. The most common use of the term is in reference to the impressive calf pole found on the northwest coast of North America. There are, in fact, several objects loosely called totem poles. Exterior house poles, memorial poles, and modulatory poles, among others. Totem pole contains crest which is made up of three things. A proper name, represented by an animal or spirit. A story or history relating to the family to said animal or spirit. And an object which display an image of animal or spirit being and by doing so evokes the story. The main material used in totem pole is the red cedar tree. And due to the wet climate and perishable nature, of the material, there are hardly any totem pole that predates before the mid 19th century they are still standing. The native people probably see the pole as being alive too, as described by a ranger from the Sita National Historical Park. The native people just let the pole stand. They have their own life cycle just like every other living thing. The indigenous people of Northwest Coast believe in spirit and nature and the people would hold a gift-giving ceremony known as the Pochla to mark important events such as birth, marriage, death, completion of a new house, succession of a new chief, and even the commissioning and rising of new totem poles. The two totem poles we are looking at today were by the Sham Xian Wolf Clan, originally from the village of Catawell in British Columbia. They are now currently housed in Vancouver Museum of Anthropology. A replica of the pole can also be found in Victoria Tunnel Bird Park as well. According to David Penny, the pair of memorial poles were raised in 1888 in honor of the chief nephew who has been killed as a young man by the colonial police. Looking at the first pole and reading it from top to bottom, you can see the giant woodpecker as a crest, originating from their ancestor who kept a woodpecker as a pet. But it consumed everything made out of wood. The woodpecker was then put down and the family took on the giant woodpecker as a crest to represent themselves. Below it is the giant eagle who has a craving for human flesh. Legend has it that he kidnapped and mated with a young woman where he devoured off his half-human, half-eagle offspring. The woman later escaped and returned to her family, where the story became the crest you see today. At the bottom, you'll see a figure called either the sharp nose or Wilodo. There are conflicting stories as to what is depicted here. David Penny mentioned in North American Indian art that the sharp nose, blade-like nose, split human victims like salmon, until a young hero of the wolf clan killed him. Another more substantial story by Hilary Stewart looking at Totem Pole says that the figure is the ancestress Will Doe holding onto her child who is sucking his finger. Over the other pole, we have a more simplistic design. and the tip shows two small figures and a mask in between them standing above the head of a crest known as the split person. The design is then repeated again at the bottom, but the figures are now larger and are holding onto a child on their hands. So in summary, in order to understand the totem poles, we must first understand the context of why the poles were made. And understanding what is being said onto the poles can be made 
much easier by breaking them down into parts and understanding why are these figures represented there. Now we come to the part where we compare and contrast these two set of religious sculpture. The Aizen Mayo sculpture is done in a style that blends India, China and Japan unique art form together that give the sculpture a realistic and fearsome look with a clever use of colours. Great for the skin and lotus with golden reserve for the bracelet and object. Meanwhile, the Wolf Clan totem pole is sculpted in traditional Northwest Coast style a stylistic representation of animal and people with little to no colour applied to it. In terms of time, Shingon Buddhism and its pantheon of deities were introduced in the 9th century, whereas it is a lot less clear for the origins of the totem pole due to having only oral records and it doesn't help that the totem pole does not last beyond one or two centuries. When it comes to how they were practiced in the past versus the present, Prayers and ritual utilizing the Aizen Mayo sculpture appears to be the same as in the past. Whereas for the totem poles, due to Canada countrywide ban of the potluck in 1884, this has effectively killed a whole generation of tradition and culture, where aging artisans were unable to find a successor. It took more than half a decade for the native culture to be picked up again. Now, besides totem pole commissioned for a non-traditional purpose, there are also restoration projects as well as raising new types of traditional totem poles. Today you have learned Buddhism in Japan, Aizen Meiyo, the wisdom king of passion, native North American culture, the roof clan totem poles, and the similarities and differences among them. This video is produced as part of a research project for the Faith and Art course in Nile Technological University, Singapore. Thank you for watching!